In ancient China, there was love that pushed the limits. In order to pass on the throne to his younger son Shou, Duke Xian of Wei decided to kill his eldest son Jizi. However, the assassins mistakenly killed Shou instead. Upon seeing his beloved brother's death, Jizi was heartbroken and begged the assassins to kill him too. When the news was told to Duke Xian and Xian Jiang, they were shocked and fainted. Not long after, Duke Xian passed away due to the shock, and the succession of the throne once again sparked chaos in the state of Wei. Xian Jiang had two sons, Shou and Shuo. After Shou's death, the throne passed to Shuo, who became Duke Hui of Wei. However, the succession was not in accordance with the laws of propriety, so the officials had objections. According to the laws of propriety, the son of the queen should be the king, and the queen was Yi Jiang, not Xian Jiang. Yi Jiang had several sons, and Jizi, the eldest, was killed, so the second son Qianmo should have become the king. Therefore, the officials drove out Duke Hui, who fled to the state of Qi because his mother was the sister of Duke Xiang of Qi. Xian Zhang's father Qi Shigong died, his son Duke Xiang had become the new king. Xian Zhang's son was driven out, and she herself was expelled from the palace. However, the people of Wei did not harm him because they were afraid of offending the state of Qi. Duke Xiang of Qi saw that his sister and nephew were being bullied and planned to help his nephew regain the throne. However, the current king of Wei, Qianmo, was the son-in-law of the Zhou king, and his wife was the sister of the Zhou king. Therefore, Duke Xiang could not attack Qianmo for the time being. But if his sister continued to suffer, she would become a widow, and as a big brother, Duke Xiang would not be happy. Besides Jizi and the current king of Wei, Yi Jiang had another son, Xu. Duke Xiang asked Xian Jiang to marry Xu so that his sister would not become a widow. However, Xian Jiang was father's concubine, and Xu, as her son, did not want to marry her. But Duke Xiang and Duke Hui both put pressure on him, and in the end, he agreed for the sake of the relationship between the two states. After Xu and Xian Jiang got married, their relationship was good, and they had five children. Except for the first child who died young, the other four were recorded in history. The second and third sons both became kings of Wei, known as Duke Dai of Wei and Duke Wen of Wei respectively. The remaining two were daughters, one married the Duke of Song and became the wife of Duke Huan of Song, and the other married the Duke of Su and became the wife of Duke Mu of Su. They were also the first female poets recorded in the Book of Songs. The chaos in Wei was not over yet. Duke Hui of Wei was still in the state of Qi, and Duke Xiang was unhappy. He still wanted his nephew to become the king of Wei. So he sent troops to attack Wei and easily won the battle, because at this time, the state of Qi was very strong. We have told a lot of stories about Zheng, a superpower that annexed many countries, but Duke Zhuangzheng was not one of the five hegemons of the spring and autumn period. And the brother of Duke Xiang of Qi, Duke Huan of Qi, was the first hegemon of the spring and autumn period, which shows how powerful the state of Qi is now, and the story of Duke Huan of Qi will be told in detail later. Duke Hui of Wei, with the help of Duke Xiang of Qi, successfully restored the kingdom and snatched back the throne. After several decades, Wei Huigong died, and his son was the famous Wei Yigong in Chinese history. Wei Yigong was known for his extravagant and bizarre behavior. While his country was in chaos due to issues with women, Wei Yigong was not interested in them at all. Instead, he had a love for cranes. He would spend a fortune on them, and they became his most important companions that he would buy as many cranes as he saw fit, no matter how much it cost. He doesn't have many women in his harem, he has plenty of cranes, and his palace maids are there to take care of them. If that were the case, it would be animal care and not ridiculous, but there is more to it than that. But these cranes were not just pets, they were also his top officials, generals, and even concubines. They enjoyed all the perks of high-ranking officials, such as official cars and personal security details. To make matters worse, Wei Yi Gong even engaged in intimate acts with his cranes at night, something that only men and women do. 
As a result of his foolish behavior, the country of Wei was left vulnerable and open to attacks from the powerful tribes in the north and west. However, Wei's soldiers were not willing to fight because Wei Yi Gong had spent all his money on his cranes and refused to reward his generals. When Wei Yi Gong asked why they were not willing to defend the country, one general suggested that he send his cranes to do the job. Wei Yi Gong finally realized his mistake and decided to kill all his cranes and distribute their meat to soldiers and civilians to appease their anger. However, it was too late. Wei's army was unable to fend off the invaders, and Wei Yi Gong was killed. The invaders burned, killed, and looted the country, leaving only a few hundred people to flee. After the enemy retreated, immigrants from other cities came, barely did not die. The next king of Wei was the second son of Xian Jiang, Wei Dai Gong, but Wei Dai Gong was in poor health and died of illness not long after he became king. Wei State was succeeded by Xian Zhang's third son, Wei Wen Gong. The story of the state of Wei is finished, because the state of Wei has been weakened since then, and has not recovered. The story of the state of Wei begins with the attack on Zheng by the allied forces of the Five Kingdoms, and while the story of Wei is finished, the story of Zheng continues. <laughs>